Oh, whoopsie. I did not. Her puss are mediocre. <laughs> Ah. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is episode 58. Man, my glad 57 is over. Mm -hmm. Until our next one. Until our next one. We fucking shoot the shit out of each other. Yeah. Yeah, until we shoot the shit out of each other. So, I'm on daddy duty right now, man. Yeah. Wife's out of town on a girls' weekend, being irresponsible as shit. Doing what you did last weekend? Doing what I did last weekend. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's different because she's doing it, so I get to be mad about it. Are you mad about it? No, I'm not. (laughs) No, but my my kids. You know, I've been a shit dad the last, like, couple days. And it's 100% due to how fucking hot it's been outside. Yeah. And the humidity and shit. It's like... Do you get off work after working all day in the shop and you come home and you're like, no, outside, no, this AC is fucking glorious. And the kids yeah. are like, why are we doing it? And I go, sitting here watching TV. That's what we're fucking doing. Yeah. So I feel bad that I didn't like. I mean, was, what can you do though? That heat, that heat fucking drains your life force. Dude, it was 85 degrees the other night mm-hmm. when I got off. Last night, I got off work, came home. It was 85 degrees last night at 9.30, yeah. and it was humid as fuck. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm not going out in the shop and opening the door and having a fire. And I mean, there's just not doing it. So I, I kind of feel bad. I tried to, I took them to a few of their favorite places to go eat out. Took them to a new, and we, we went to Pizza Ranch the other day, and they fucking were all about Pizza Ranch. Oh, yeah. Oh, they loved it. Yeah, we were we pulled out of the YMCA, and they are like, where are we going to eat? And I go, how about Pizza Ranch? And they're like, no, 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 no. I go, we're going to Pizza Ranch. <laughs> they fucking loved it. Had they're, a great time. They're using your word on you. No. Exactly. They're trying to eat, but I don't let them. Yeah. I don't let them tell me what to do. I don't let them walk all over me. Because I'm the dad, and I'm the boss. And you do what you want. And I do what this I is want. your show. Yep. Yeah. Like my dad said, when you pay your own bills, you can do what you want. Well. I'm doing what I want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So, yeah, I'm on daddy duty till tomorrow. But I think I'm going to be an amazing husband tomorrow. Yeah. And this is why. Okay. I'm going to have the dishwasher empty. Uh-huh. I'm going to have the washing machine empty. Mm-hmm. So when she gets home, everything she's got go, goes right in the machine that can do it for her. And then on top of that, I'm going to have, I'm going to pull the old fucking Blackstone out tomorrow morning and I'm going to cook a beautiful breakfast, hash browns, bacon, scrambled eggs, eggs, the whole works. The whole works. And then at about 1030 or 11, I'm going to put a couple racks of ribs on the smoker and we're going to have ribs and sweet corn for dinner. What time is is she supposed to be home in the morning then? I have no idea. Oh. I'm guessing she's going to get up early and leave, and she'll be home relatively early. Oh, yeah. So I'll probably send her a text tonight when I go to bed that says, hey, call me when you're leaving. So it gives me enough time to get up, get the black stone out, get it ready, get everything organized, start it up. Right. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make sure she comes home and everything. I mean... I didn't clean the house because I was a lazy piece of shit. But you know what? The fucking heat got the best man. Next yeah. week will be better. Well, we'll next see. week will be better. We'll see. We'll <laughs> see. The time will tell. We'll see. <laughs> Usually, I'm the one that freaks out and fucking everything's all dirty and yeah, cluttered and uh, fucking get out. I come home from work and I'm like, oh, blah, 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 blah. you're just a grump ass yelling at everybody. I'm like, who the fuck put this paper on the fucking table? And blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. What a dick. Right? Colby Dick. Yep. That's that should be me. your name. Colby Dick. <laughs> that's me. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So that's that's what my game plan for tomorrow. I'm going to. Fun? I'll be editing. For you guys. Yeah. 
He's the editing master. He knows what he's doing. Like that? You wouldn't like anything if I edited it, probably because it'd be like terrible. Yeah. Probably. Unless I had as much experience as you did. Well, there's only one way to get experience. It's to do it. It's to do it. That's what I did. Right? You did it. Yep. You know, so learn on the fly. Learn new things every day. <laughs> so hey, speaking of, you can help me become a better editor. By helping us go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, and then tell all your friends. And then when you tell your friends, they go and they subscribe and then their friends subscribe and their friends subscribe. Well, they have to tell their friends first. Exactly. Yeah. But we get this chain of chain of events that happens where all of a sudden there's a bunch of subscribers and then we start being able to bring you better content, faster content, more content and we get to a point where me and Brandon can edit in the same facility. Yeah. That would be that would be uh, pretty nice. But we need you guys to help us and so that way we can help you. Help us help you. Yep. So help me help me name that movie. <clears throat> help me help you. We've gone through this fucking Jesus. dance before. Say it say it again. Help me help you. Help me help you. You've literally got this movie um, wrong before. I'm gone. I don't know. Jerry, I don't know. Jerry Maguire. Yep. Uh, if I can still haven't seen it. I know. You know what I did watch the other night, though? Ooh, Aquaman. Murder, She Wrote. Did you? By Lorena Bobbitt. The, by Lorena <laughs> Bobbitt. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you actually watch Murder, She Wrote? <laughs> I did. I was scrolling through. I was laying on the couch, and it was like, 10 30 at night yeah and i was scrolling down to like my favorite channels like discovery channel national geographic all the good ones right and i'm almost there i see like mtv ridiculousness and then it was like the oldies channels mm -hmm. and it was like murder she wrote and i'm like let me check this out wait a minute i fucking turned it on and i was like hmm. did you watch a full episode uh, i watched like 25 minutes and i was like i got it yeah I know what this is Got about. The gist. I know what this is about. <laughs> I don't need to do any more yep. of this. I had to watch it because my mom used to watch it, so I was yeah. like forced to. Yeah, I was like, eh, I, I get it. I yeah. understand. <laughs> and I moved on. Murder, she wrote, lady, not Lorena Bobbitt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, so on this, of, see, speaking of Hollywood, Hollywood. Oh yes, yes. I wanted to. Uh, so I heard some interesting. And this, I heard this the other day on on. Uh, my drive to work, I was listening to a radio station on my way way to work, and they were talking about this, and I thought this was fucking nuts because, and, and maybe it's just because I never thought about it. It's probably the, yeah. Never, you know what I mean? Like, I never, like, thought about the backstory behind, like, and, we're not, and we talk about Hollywood, right? We're talking about the Hollywood stars, the walk of fame. The stars they put on the ground and make a big deal about. And people put their handprints in the concrete. And mm -hmm. I never thought, how much do those cost? You know what I mean? Yeah, I have no idea. Everyone is always, like, when when you talk about a Hollywood star, you think about, well, you just have to be famous and be good at being famous, and then they give you a star. That's not the case. You have to apply for them. And when you apply for them, let me make sure I get my facts straight here. You have to apply for the Hollywood star. You have to apply for the Hollywood star. Okay. And um, so mm. the, the, you apply for the star through the Hollywood Historic Trust. Okay. So there's, there's a, 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 a program that manages all these Hollywood stars. So first you have to apply for them, right? Right. Then they go through all your credentials, what you've done, what you've accomplished, everything you've done in your career, and they say, yes, you can get one, or no, you can't. When you get one, it costs $55,000. Gee, well, I guess that's really not much for a For Hollywood somebody star. who's a Hollywood star, it's probably nothing, right? Yeah. But it costs $55,000 per installation for a Hollywood star. Why is it so much? Right? Now, let me tell you why. Okay, so let me start back, right? The Hollywood Walk of Fame says here is a landmark that has over 2,700 stars 
along the road, which seems kind of low. Uh, no, I don't think so. Like to me, that seems like it's a little low. I don't think it's because not everybody gets one. You know what I mean? You got to be. Well, no, but think about all the fucking famous people that have been, that have come and gone, that have been like really big famous people. Yeah, but when did they start doing it? That I don't know. Yeah. Oh. I, I guess I'd have to research. And I'm just scrolling quick, and the only date I see is October 17th, 2019, and I know that's not right. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you apply for the star. Yeah. They evaluate your pro your portfolio that you submit your yeah, application yeah they deem you yes then they charge you fifty five thousand dollars and that fifty five thousand dollars a majority of that money goes directly to the hollywood historic trust okay whatever the fuck that is and and that's for repair maintenance and security of the stars okay then the rest of the money is split up between um, making the star, breaking up the square that the star is going to go into, installation, security of the star, and a plaque that the star gets, the famous person gets right. to say, you are on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Okay, so what are these stars made out of? What is the actual star made out of? Because it's got to be like gold or something. I think it is gold. Um, let me... What is Hollywood stars made of? I want to say they're actual gold. Oh, terrazzo and brass. brass. Terrazzo? I don't know what the <clears throat> fuck that is. Terrazzo is some sort of metal or granite or rock or something. Mickey Mouse has a star? Yeah. How? Why? <laughs> That's... It's a yeah. fictional cartoon. He's not fictional. He's real. Mickey Mouse is not so, fictional. So is Goofy. <laughs> okay. Uh, have you ever been to the Hollywood Boulevard? No, I have not. I've never been to California. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I've been to California. Briefly. Hmm. Haven't, like, ex the nope. Been around and seen shit and done shit. I was yeah. coming back uh, from a TDY stopped in uh, Travis Air Force Base. It's a pretty cool place. A lot of fucking street performers. I had some dude like try to. <clears throat> he's like, "Hey man, check out my CD." You know? Yeah. Uh, he's like some trying to spread the word or whatever. Mixtape. <laughs> yeah. He's like, "Check out my CD." Yeah. Blah blah blah. A uh, donation fight. I was like, "No, nah, I got money." Grabbed a CD and walked away. <laughs> it's like, oh, I guess it's not free or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You actually want me to fucking pay for your crap ass yeah. mixtape. Dude, it's, uh, you know, the competition in a city like that mm -hmm. is unreal. You know, and I know every, like most shit's based out of like Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. LA. All these, all these people are fucking there for one thing they want to get famous they want to make movies they want to be artists they want to do whatever and all the access to that is there so it's a fucking just a epic battlefield of who's better than who and no fucking way would you catch me doing that i wouldn't even want to live in that city as a anything else other dude than after lift after listening to some of the stories benny's told me about just a few things he has to deal with living in california yeah Nah. No. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know. There's a lot of people in California that, you know, they've never left there and they mm -hmm. love it. They love California because it is what it is and they're used to it. Yeah. But there's, there's a reason why when you buy something in a store and it's like has no warnings anywhere about anything or, but then there's a tag that says, it may known, cause cancer. No one to cause cancer or, yeah. in California. In the state of California. Why? Yeah. Only in the state of California you will catch cancer with this product. Yeah. Hmm. Weird. No. What they're saying is they were the ones that found out that it's known to cause cancer, and they're just warning everybody else. Yeah. Well, I have a feeling California is a little overreactive. Everything causes cancer. Yep. Everything. Yeah. So, it, dude, it, I heard that the other day, and I was like, I'm going to tell Brandon that because I didn't even think about it. Yeah. You know, all the times I've seen, like, somebody on, like, a red carpet doing a 
Red Star premiere or whatever because they're getting their star. Never even thought about it. I always thought you get famous enough, they just give it to you and they tell you to show up because they're going to present you with a star. No. <laughs> yeah. No. You have a bit that goes into it. You have to be promoted to that level. Mm-hmm. And then you have to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, but apparently a majority of that money goes to the Hollywood Star Trust. Yeah. I wonder if they take a firm firm payments for 55,000. A firm payments? Yeah. I don't know what we should ask. Yeah, should. I mean, I've done some pretty cool shit in my life. I bet you they might think about it. <laughs> yeah, probably. Submit hey, your application. You can't knock it unless you fucking, you know what I mean? You try. You got to try. Yeah, I suppose you could do that, yeah. I should try. I should try to get a Hollywood star and see if they... Just try it see what happens. Not after the comment about California I just made. They're going to yeah, see like, that and be like, no. Guy. Yeah. I'm going to start my own Hollywood Walk of Fame, but it's going to be in Iowa. The Iowa Walk of Fame? I'm going to start with Ashton Kutcher. Th- is it going to go through a cornfield? Maybe. It'll split a cornfield. Ooh, you make it like a corn maze, and then through the maze yeah. is the fucking... Yeah. It'll be like a ear of corn per star <clears> and stuff. Yeah, Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, I'll start with Ashton Kutcher, and then I'll do Mila Kunis because... I don't think she's from Iowa. She's not, but she's married to Ashton Kutcher, so I'll... You could do Jason Momoa. Yeah, Jason Momoa. He's from not Iowa. He is from Des Moines. Yeah, but... In Hawaii, I think. Yeah, he's from Hawaii. But we, we'll consider him an Iowa. Isn't think. that weird? Iowa, Hawaii. Well, no. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, how do you go from Iowa to Hawaii? I don't know. I don't know his whole story there. Right? I'm not entirely sure. I mean, that. I can see the extreme. I can see how people in Iowa can be like, I'm going to Hawaii. I'm making a change for my life. I'm going to Hawaii. Not knowing anything about like tropics, islands, water, mm-hmm. and just be like, I'm ready for a change. I guess I can see that. I, I mean, if Hawaii that wasn't, part makes sense. If Hawaii but, wasn't so expensive, dude, Hawaii would be fucking great to live in. Dude. If last, you don't get island fever and last stuff. Last time I was but. in Hawaii, uh, <laughs> we went downtown, and beers were fucking outrageous. Mm-hmm. Dude, so normally before I'd go TDY, I'd go to like an ATM, and I'd pull out my per diem. Mm-hmm. So I'd research my per, per diem for the trip, and then I would take a cash advance on my government travel card. So I'd have my per diem for the trip in in hand so i could just spend it while i was there partying and doing whatever yeah and i remember pulling my per diem out and be like nice and then we went out and it was gone like that and i'm like holy fuck yeah drinks are 12 bucks yeah for a little shot like that Mm -hmm. holy shit i never used my government card for my per diem because i always wanted that fucking per diem check yeah at the end or whatever end of the month so we had a dude i don't know if i told you this or not or if i even told it on here i'm not sure but we had a guy we were in spain i think and he used his government card swiped it at a fucking whorehouse (laughs) (laughs) nice got he got a he had a threesome i guess with a couple hookers ballsy and yeah he got he got caught kicked Oh, yeah, dude. I had, uh, there was a guy in our squadron. Uh, he was, I think he was like, he went downtown Dubai. Mm -hmm. And he used the government travel card to book a skydiving excursion over like the man made, like tropical, like the islands that look like palm trees and shit. Yeah. He went skydiving, had a great fucking time. (laughs) They caught up to him pretty quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He got fucking booted. See you later. Yeah. So, I mean, long story short, don't use your Dang. credit cards, government travel cards, business cards. Don't use them inappropriately. You shouldn't do that. That's no. the wrong thing to do. You pull money out of the ATM and you pay cash. <clears throat> yes. You can't go somewhere and use your card where it's going to come back as an expense from Sheila's fuck shack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to take the cash out of the ATM that says uh, Wyatt Hotel. And then you go spend the cash at Fe- Sheila's Fuck Shack. Yeah. That's how you do it. For anyone that didn't know. I so. accidentally used my card at a local bar in Virginia one time. 
wasn't even on a plane, so we weren't even supposed to use our cards at all, you know? Yep. I accidentally used it because I was hammered. I didn't know what I was paying with. Mm -hmm. Just grabbed a card. I didn't get in trouble. I mean, I got kind of like a talking to you or whatever, but like, accidents <clears throat> happen. Well, if you do your expense report and you click like, if you put it, it like non-reimbursable expense or whatever, like deduct from employees paycheck. Yeah. Normally they're not too bad about it. Mm -hmm. But so, but like when I used to go TDY, I used to take money out of the ATM at the hotel. We'd get to the hotel and I would take my per diem out in cash. Yeah. And I would do it that way on purpose. That way I knew how much money I had to spend while I was there. Yeah. And I would spend it. <laughs> spend it all in one, I, one fucking go. Well, sometimes. I mean, sometimes I'd go home with cash in my pocket, but depending on the trip, if it was a dud, I'd go home with most of my per diem and cash in my pocket. Right. If it wasn't a dud, a lot of times I was pulling my personal credit card or my debit card out of my pocket and I was keeping the party going. You yeah. know what I mean? Which is why I would pull the money out first so that I didn't do that. Yeah. So I wasn't using my own card and going crazy, being broke, and then waiting three weeks for my fucking per diem check to hit. All right. But, hey, when you're that young, I was doing it as smart as a young, a young man could do it. Wasn't always successful, but I was also a young man. Yeah. So, hey, dude, the scariest thing I ever did, I was in Guam, and I was... That was your first deployment, right? No, it was checking. not. Just checking. I was at I was in Guam and I was in this dance club with a a bunch of guys that were on deployment or TDY with me, and we were in this dance club and I was up like front by the stage, right? And this little Asian dude was like going nuts dancing. <laughs> so I was like, "Fuck yeah, dance battle, let's go, buddy!" I was drunk, so me and this. Little Asian kid got in a dance battle. I whooped his ass. Mm -hmm. Did some crazy shit. I don't remember what it, how to do it now. I couldn't even try. I, I mean, I was like, ooh, ooh, uh, uh, spinning, doing some weird shit. I think I did the worm. Stood up, did a backflip. Whole fucking place went nuts. He walked away with his tail tucked. I walked away with my wallet, not in my back pocket. <laughs> Did it get stolen or did it just fall out? I freaked the fuck fuck out, dude. Like it freaked was freaked the fuck out. It was about 35, 40 minutes later. We were leaving the club going somewhere else. And I was like, where the fuck's my wallet? Dude, I sprinted down the street back to this club. Got in the club and I went back to like the stage where I was dancing. And I was looking all over. There's my wallet. Opened up. Laying next to one of the subwoofers on the side of the stage. It came out of my pocket when I did a backflip. Yeah. It was just laying there right on the stage where everyone could fucking see it. It was a wallet. You could tell. Right. I was like, there's no way. I picked it up. Everything's in it. All the money was still in it. And I'm like. You're fucking lucky. Holy shit. Yeah, dude. That's what I was. I thought for sure. I was like, well, this trip's going to be a dud now. Yeah. And you go sit back in my hotel room. With your tail between your legs. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Like, who actually won that battle? Got to tell my fucking the guy who aircraft commander I lost my government travel card in Guam. Oof. Yeah, that'd be tough. Right? Yeah. Yikes. So, okay. Okay. Hollywood stars. We're done with that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I w okay, so I was on a kick this week with, like hearing some new shit that I thought was cool. You guys might not think it's cool. I thought it was fucking interesting. So I wanted to talk about it. And I wanted to tell Brandon about it. Yeah. I saw this this thing, the Hollywood star thing. I heard it on the radio. But then the other night, I was laying on the couch, and I was watching Netflix, and this there was a new documentary that I fucking clicked on, which I'm a fucking nerd for documentaries. Mm -hmm. I clicked on this documentary, and... It was, it blew my fucking mind. And I'm going to tell you the simple reason why it blew my mind after I explain what the fuck it is and, and what happened here. So let me pull this up so I have the correct information for you because my memory doesn't always serve perfect. In 2013, mm -hmm. 
there was a uh, kind of an expedition set out to explore this this cave in like southern Africa. And this this cave set is called the Rising Star Cave. And they started checking it out and going through this cave. And they, they ended, there was a bunch of archaeologists that were on this expedition. And they started finding bones. And they started finding like a few things that were not expected to be in the cave. Long story short, they found a new species of Homo. And by homo, I'm talking about a geno, geno class, genus class, mm -hmm. like homo sapiens. The new homo genus that they found is a homo naledi. Okay. Now this, this species is like average height was like four foot nine. They were small. They stood on two feet like we did. They were pretty hairy. I mean, they were, like, hairy across their whole body. Mm -hmm. They had a real flat nose, kind of a wide face. Looked kind of a cross between a person and, like, a gorilla, if you will. Kind of. Yeah. So, but the thing that I thought was crazy. They lived 300,000 years ago. It was, it was over 300,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. So it's crazy I, it was about. between 236 and 335,000 years ago is when they walked up the earth. Now, in this documentary, they talked about how the, the oldest cave drawing that they could come up with was from the Neanderthals. And it was like 60 to 80,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. There was that was the oldest known cave drawing that that was that was around. They found cave drawings in this cave that were from three hundred thousand years ago from the Homo naledi. They also said that <laughs> the oldest burial that they had ever come across was from like Homo sapiens, but it was like sixty thousand years ago or like fifty thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. Now the interesting thing about it is, right? They said as the as the brain in the Homo genus grew, the more we were able to feel love, empathy, uh, happiness. Our feelings were be we were able to express our feelings better because we had a bigger brain. We had more capacity. These Homo naledis had this like one of the smallest brains in the Homo genus, right? So they're like, there's no way these people. Had, they had none of that. None of what we feel. They were just simple-minded, reactive, survivalist type things. This cave, these people that were exploring this cave have harnesses, belts. Uh, they were using modern tools to like gain access in certain areas that were super tight. There's one spot that goes like straight up. And then it's like 12 meters straight down. And it's seven inches wide in this cave. And at the bottom, it opens up into this big fucking chamber with like 60 foot tall ceilings and shit. And that was what they called the burial chamber. They found out these homo naledis were taking their dead loved ones and they were carrying them through the cave all the way to this burial chamber down this really tight chute I was just talking about. And they were actually digging graves, burying them. And they were creating like a ceremony for their death, which means they had some sort of belief, like religion, some sort of mm. what happens next. We need to bury them for what happens next. Their, their minds of thinking, like when they discovered these people, they found out that they, they were using tools a hundred two hundred thousand years before they thought the first people were using tools aliens gave it to them they they had fire they found proof in the cave that they were using fire to light the cave as they took these people back they said homo sapiens people the right. people walking the earth now are the only species on the planet ever that have ever shown any sort of burial any sort of love, remorse, friendship, family 
ties any kind of empathy towards that kind of thing with a with a death they this is the first this is the pr- this is proof of the first ever species outside of humans that has ever shown care kindness empathy yeah uh religion afterlife thought process of what to do next they said every every other species they've ever found when somebody dies they just would move them away from wherever they were doing their thing Mm -hmm. they'd drag them over and then the the animals would eat them they would rot they their bones would and i got to thinking i'm like that's fucking crazy yeah why did they die why did they die right What what do you mean there's only been two species that have ever done this kind of thing, right? They've had the mental capacity to think outside of the dead. They died. On to the next thing. They've had the mental capacity to feel emotion and feel like grief for death and celebrate and burial and that kind of thing. If they had the mental capacity to do that, and they were the first they were the first ones to have fire it's now proven the first ones to create fire first ones to have uh tools man made tools where they would chip stones into God damn it knives and right. and, and shit like if they had the mental capacity to do that that long ago what happened they never answered that question for me i was laying there the whole time like what happened you know yeah but they ne- they never were able to figure that out because the only reason those bones are still around is because they were buried in a cave. Right. You know what I mean? With no exposure to anything other than stagnant air from the cave. So they were, but they had, they buried some of their, they buried some of their fucking uh, members, like with tools and shit for like the afterlife. Like you might need this. Like one of them had a tool in his hand, like in the grave. Yeah. A couple others had like, these little woven fucking necktie things. Dude, I don't know. You guys might think I'm a fucking nerd right now, but there's something about this this thing, this documentary I watched. Dude, a few things hit me. What happened to them, right? Well, they probably just died out. You know, but why? I don't... What do if you mean? If they were that intelligent, why? That... Could have been anything. They could have just, they couldn't reproduce in the amount of time it took to keep the fucking population going or something. I don't know. Okay. Okay. So I'll give you that. Yeah. Could have done that. But the other thing that, that fucking baffled me, right? I got to thinking about 300,000 years ago. Yeah, it's a long time ago. You can't even fathom how long ago that was. 300,000 years ago. You can't even put that into perspective. No. Right? Think about Christopher Columbus. <coughs> He's in the history book, and nobody, like, half of that information nobody really believes because it's so long ago that nobody really knows the real story. Mm-hmm. And that was only a couple hundred years ago. Right? Now think of 300,000. 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. We're talking a little over, what, 600 years? And that was so long ago that nobody really actually knows exactly what happened other than what was just jotted down. Right? They're talking about things that walked the earth 300,000 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that fucking nuts? Yeah, no, I'm trying to think of like just Yeah, you can't you can't fathom you it. You can't that's... you can't mentally put that into into like a figurable thing. Right. That was so long ago. It was. And those bones are still there. Yeah. Isn't that fucking nuts? I don't know. I might be a fucking total nerd. I might I should have been an archaeologist or something, maybe. But that shit is like 
I think that's cooler than fuck. Yeah. That you can find shit that somebody did that long ago. I mean, I watched another documentary about fucking the Egyptians. They talked about like old, old school Egyptians. And this really got me fucked up, right? When you think about like old Egypt versus new Egypt, right? You know how many years they're talking about? What do you mean? Old Egypt, like, like when, ancient like, Egypt, like, like the like the first mummies when they first discovered how to like wrap people up and take care of their their bodies and put them in tombs and shit. Mm-hmm. To when the Romans took over Egypt. Now, how long was it? Five thousand years. Five thousand years yeah now think about this it hasn't been five thousand years since jesus died right think about all the shit that people don't know from jesus's time all the shit that's questioned all the shit that's you know what i mean and that's only been two thousand we're talking the strain of egypt from the first time they wrapped a mummy to the time the Romans took over, 5,000 years. That is, dude. Was it 5,000? 5,000 years. Because it says 3,100 BC is ancient Egypt. Well, the documentaries I was watching was was more than that. Hmm. Because the Romans took over the Romans took over Egypt, apparently, from this documentary I watched. Like, three, 31 years B.C. was when, like, Egypt was conquered by Rome. Something like that. So My numbers might not be 100% correct here, not. so bear with me. Because that said ancient Egypt, 3100 B.C. And Rome's rule over Egypt began in 30 B.C. 30 B.C. So okay, 3,000 so, yeah. years. Yeah. Lower 3, okay, so years. maybe what I'm thinking here is ancient Egypt times. They were talking mm-hmm. about the mummies and how old they were. Mm-hmm. And they said the mummies were about four, five, four to 5,000 years from old. From 3,100 B.C. until now would be about 5,000. 5, 5,000-year-old yeah. mummy. So so think about that, right? Even, I mean. Yeah, that's crazy time. Right? And, and, and that's, and that's 5,000 years. Now take everything that happened in that 5,000 years and go, what happened in 295,000 years before that? Mm -hmm. Holy shit. That's an unfathomable amount of time. You know what would be cool is if when we die, we are able to see like the evolution of everything and just see how everything fucking panned out. If, If like when we died, we had access to the whole history of everything yeah just know everything dude 100 percent knowledge of everything i promise you that'd be fucking crazy i promise you i'm going to south africa and i'm gonna hang out with the Naledis. well you wouldn't necessarily like be there but you'd well see. yeah but i'm gonna go like check it out and be like mm-hmm. <laughs> i liked you guys from the first time i heard about you in 2023 you you guys i like you yeah and they're going to be these short little midgets. Maybe that's why I like them. Because they're midgets? Average height of a Naledi was four foot nine. Dude. Yeah, that's your. That's totally your jam. That's right down my... You like those short, hairy midgets? <sighs> yeah, well, let's get rid of the hairy... Dude, I saw the sexy, sexiest... The sextiest. Sexiest little person I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. What was it, Friday or Thursday? I think you showed me... I think it was Friday. Friday. Pretty sure. I saw a TikTok. <laughs> Did you follow? No. Did you like it? No. I let it go. Yeah. When you love something <laughs> so much, <laughs> you have to just. That's probably go. good because we share a TikTok and I'd be getting like all these midgets and stuff and then or little people, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. And Thanks. then Ashley, Ashley would be like, what in the fuck is. Although she knows your fucking your love for for little people, so she'd be like, "I know exactly where this came from." It's Colby. Let me explain it, okay? 
It's well, actually, it's hard to explain. I, I don't know if I can explain it. There is something about. Is it because it makes you feel like monstrous? No, it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with their proportions and stuff. A little person. I don't. I don't even know what it is. I just. I see a woman that's a little person, and I'm like, mm, "Dang, girl." I don't know. I maybe it's the fact that every one of them have fucking big butts. They, yeah, they do have big butts. I, I and mean, they cannot lie. I I don't know. I, there's something about a little woman that is just I don't know. My wife, she doesn't. She knows. She knows that's what I love, and I. She's told me. She's told me. Got a hole pass <laughs> yeah. if I ever want to use it, but she's also the one that drugged me away from a very pretty little woman on the New York Stri- or uh, Las Vegas Las trip. Vegas trip yeah. too. I was like, "Oh shit, I'm going that way!" And she grabbed me, and we were gone. And I think, <laughs> "Babe, it's my time." I think this she was. I think she pass. was like, "Nope, no hall pass tonight, buddy." Nope. She wanted that dick herself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what she wanted. Yeah. Anyway, that is, uh, that is all the time we have for tonight. What? Yeah, but before we go, I want to ask you a very vital, very important question that's okay. been plaguing people for years. Okay. Pancakes or waffles? Ooh. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes or waffles? Yeah. Hmm. Well, 100% for me, it's waffles. I was going to say, because considering how many blue waffles you've made your kids... Oh god, they're gonna hate me for that. Yeah, it, dude, there, there's nothing better than a fucking big old fluffy waffle, lathered on top with like strawberry and bananas, whipped cream, and then just syrup, doused with fucking. I don't syrup. like them. So when we get them in the navy and stuff, when they make them, they're always like super soft. Like even on the outsides, I like it when it's nice and crispy on the outside, kind of like an egg. But it's, when but you make it's, an eggo where it's got that yeah. crisp to and it, and you know, you know what the difference is. What? A matter of a minute. Yeah. When you open the waffle iron and you go, the, they look done, but they're still soft. Put that fucker back, flip her around, and give it one more minute. Yeah. And I guarantee you the outside is hard, crispy, inside, nice and fluffy. I, I do I do like me some waffles, but I'm going to have to go pancakes just for the sake of argument at least. For the sake of argument, I do like pancakes. I will. You say can this. really make some shitty pancakes, dude, but fucking when you make some dude. good pancakes, oh, gone, they're good. I will say this: one of these days here soon, I'm going to make pancakes for the kids on the yeah. Blackstone. Oh yeah, you make some big ones. But I'm gonna imagine g- making a big ass fucking pancake like that on there. But wait, listen. But wait, there's more. I'm going to get one of the Blackstone griddle bottles, uh-huh. and I'm going to fill it full of like pretty thin pancake mix, and I'm going to do some each, designs and each shit. kid's name. In cursive, yeah. Let it let it set up for a minute, and then I'm gonna pour a Mickey Mouse pancake, yeah, on top of their name, so then it all kind of fuses together. So when I flip it, each kid will have a Mickey Mouse pancake with their name in cursive in the middle. That'd be cool. They're gonna freak. My dad used to make don't his tell Mickey them Mouse I'm doing it. Yeah, don't let them watch this. Yeah, they're gonna fucking love it. Yeah. Well, all right. Well. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We love to see you back next week. Episode 58. Hey, guys. 58. Well, next we week. Fucking we fucking love you. We appreciate you. Yeah. Also, real quick before we go, <laughs> head over to RustyLids.com. Dot com. Check out everything that they got on their uh, online showroom. They have hats, patches, combos. They have pre-assembled. You can pick yeah. them how you want them. They got some new golf hats that I just Fuck. ordered one the other day. And yes. I've never noticed this before, chicken but they got wing, some uh, women's hats. Women's hats. Which I didn't think they had before, but they are pretty fucking dope. Rusty Lids is phenomenal. They literally will hook you up, and I promise you it'll be your next favorite hat. Yeah. Head over, check them out, rustylids.com. Use promo code love you L O V E U. You'll get yourself a K Love You Buy discount and you will fall in love with your new favorite hat. Indubitably. So with that being said, hey, we love you guys. Love you to death. Fuck, Fuck you. K love you bye. I'm chasing my butt cheeks up and down the corn. 
All these girls have cowboy boots and wear their Wrangler near fuck me fuck in the butt hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, take two. Chasing their butt cheeks Up and down the corn All these girls have cowboy boots And carry around their pitchforks Chasing their butt cheeks Up and down the corn All these girls have real nice butts And wear those Wrangler jean shorts <laughs> All right, uh, pull chocks. Pull chocks. 